Good morning everyone. Thank you for joining me for this video. I am Mr. Ish. I have right before this video presented a bunch of proofs on a variety of derivative rules. You know we talked about the multiple constant rule or you can say the constant multiple rule of derivatives. We looked at the sum rule of derivatives, the difference rule of derivatives, the product and the quotient rules. These are all rules that you're familiar with in terms of technique and in terms of solving derivative questions. What I want to do in this video, show you the proofs for the two of the simplest derivatives that you will ever encounter and you know how to do these derivatives. It's just we've never talked about them in a formalized manner and shown you why they are the way they are. Look, derivative of a constant is always, as you know, a zero. And derivative of a, an expression which looks like this, a constant multiplied by some variable, but the variable is to the power of one, is always just a constant. And you can exemplify these in this manner. The first one right here, derivative of a constant, like any constant, let's just say like four, you know it's gonna be a zero. We wanna look in this video, why is it going to be a zero? And the second one, derivative of anything which looks like this, d or dx, four x, because here x has the exponent of one. We're only looking here at the exponent of one case. And you know the derivative of this is going to be four. We wanna know why it would be four. You know here we're looking at a c, so when you do the derivative of a constant, it becomes zero. Here we're looking at something which looks like c to the x. When you do the derivative of this, you just retain the constant and you lose the variable. In this video, we'll look at the proofs of the der derivations using the basic definition of derivative. We look at these proofs to explain why this is the case. And you know how to do this because you've seen it in terms of examples. Here we just formalize it. So let's start here with the first case, this one, when you're doing just the derivative of a constant. When you're looking at something which looks like f of x or y is equal to c, or you can say y equals b, and you know in terms of a graph that's just happening to be a horizontal line, y equals c, and you know we have a intercept here of 0 comma c. And you're asked to find the derivative of a horizontal line, and you know right up front derivative of a horizontal line is 0, because you know derivatives meet mean rate of change rate of change always is talking about a slope, change in y divided by change in x. If you look at a point over here, you can say this is x comma c. If you look at a point several units away, this would be x plus h comma c. When you look at the derivative of this type of a function, and you can say we're looking at something which looks like f of x is equal to c, and now we're tasked with finding the derivative. You know the prime here implies derivative of the function that you're looking at. You look over here at your points that you've established, you're looking at change in y divided by change in x, you're looking at c, right, minus c or x plus h minus x, you end up getting a 0 over h which is a 0. So this right here this is not the formal proof which I will show it to you momentarily but this right here explains why anytime you have a derivative of a function which looks like this and that function is really like y equals c or f of x is equal to c, it ends up being a horizontal line and horizontal lines are flat lines, they have no slope. Formally, how do you represent this? Well, formally, you represent this in terms of a proof as this. The derivative of something which is an f of x, and you're doing the derivative of that, in terms of the formal proof, will play out like this. You're looking at something which is f of x plus h minus f of x over h. But you have to play your constant in here, your variable in here, into that form for the formal proof, and this is how it plays out. And you know its limit always h approaches 0. We, can, we could have added that right here, but we'll put it in over here. We're looking at c into x plus h. But look here, we have an equation here c, and you have an imaginary x to the power of a 0. Because x to the power of 0 is always equal to 1, that 1 times c is just the c. You have c times x plus h to the power of 0 minus c, you can just do for completeness sake, you can just put x to the 0 because it completes it in terms of being consistent. Then you have the h on the bottom. You open it up. By opening it up, you solve it out. Limit, h approaching 0. x plus h whole to the power of 0 is just a 1. You have a c minus x to the power of 0 is just a 1. 1 times that c is a c over h. You end up having limit as h approaches 0 you have 0 over h and you end up getting 0 and the derivative is proven. So for any time you have, a, you have an expression which is just the derivative of a constant, you know automatically to plug in a 0. You don't have to go through tedious calculations. You just know when you have something which is a derivative that you have to find for a constant, it leads to a 0 and now you know why it leads to a 0. Because it has a derivative of 0, you can't draw a tangent line to this. If this right here is your line of interest and you want to draw a tangent line at any of these points, 
it's, it would be impossible to draw a tangent line to graze at only one point because that line would end up grazing all the points on this line. It would end up being a coincident line. So you don't have a curve over here where you can have a tangent line graze it. A tangent line to this would be actually the same line. This derivative of it would be a zero. In the remainder of this video, we look at this next case and that'll be it. Now when we have to prove the second case over here, we're looking at a function which looks like this f of x is equal to cx. And you know here x has an exponent of one, which is meaningless in the sense that you don't have to write this cx to the one, you can just write cx. And if someone were to ask you to find the derivative of this, you know the x would disappear and the c would retain. We want to know why that is the case. Representative equations of this form would be something which would go right through the origin based off on and modification of y equals x type of lines. You could have y equals minus x or you can have x or 2x, 3x, 4x or fractional x's. These are all examples like 3x, 1 or 3x. You can have minus 4x. You can have minus 1 or 5x. These are all representative examples of this form where the coefficient remains but the variable goes. So when you're looking at the most basic form, we're looking at a y equals x. You know y equals x is what we're really looking at as a most basic form. And you know y equals x ha happens to have a slope m equals 1. Why? Because if you were to take one point right over here, it would be x comma, you can just say f of x. And another point, h units where you can say it would be x plus h comma f of x plus h. And if you were to actually plug in the values you have from this line y equals x, any value you put for the y or the x will always equal to the y. So technically you're looking at the same thing divided by the same thing in terms of change of rates and you end up having a slope of one. Think about it. If x over here represents one, y will represent one. If x over here represents three, y over here will represent three. So you're doing change in y, you're doing change in y divided by change in x, and you're essentially doing the same thing divided by the same thing, and you end up having a slope of one. But formally, why is this the case? that the derivative of something which looks like this is just to c and i'll show you and it starts again from the basic definition of derivative if f of x is equal to this right here what we have to do we have to run this through the basic definition of derivative to prove this to be the case and it works like this the derivative of a function which is cx to the power of one or which is just cx is equal to limit as h approaches zero and you know you have to be here relatively accurate with terms of terminology and your notation has to be good then you're, lo you're plugging everything in over here c times x plus h to the power of one one is meaningless here but we can just write it and then c x to the power of one over h i'm only putting these ones here for consistency sake no other reason limit as h approaches zero we open it up we have c x plus c h minus c x i've eliminated the ones over here temporarily and you can cancel this out what do you have limit as h approaches zero? We have ch over h. H is cancel out and you end up having a c. So the derivative of anything which looks like this, cx, where the exponent here is one, is such that the variable is removed and you're retaining only the constant. And that's exactly how it is. So if you have any type of these y equals x lines, it could be having steep slopes, like 3 over x is a line with a steep slope, minus 4x is a line with a steep slope, but in an opposite direction, then you would just retain the constant. Your here, the slope or the derivative of 3x would be just a 3, derivative of minus 4x would be just a minus 4. And then when you're looking at these fractional slopes, which are lines going through the origin, but having flatter slopes, they're flatter or lower slopes because you have a more change in x and you have a smaller change in y. Here, then you just retain the fractional aspect coefficient and you lose the x. Here, the derivative would be 1 or 3. Here, the derivative would be minus 1 or 5. And you could run it through the same way and it wouldn't even matter. Maybe I'll just show you the proof of something which is f of x is equal to a minus cx where we're looking at a minus line where the line is going here to the other end of the origin and let's show you that and we'll close the video with that last example if your function is this minus cx to the power of one which is the same thing as minus cx you know if you do the derivative of this your answer will just be a minus c we'll just formally prove why that is the case we're looking at a line which is going again to the origin the constant could be a fractional constant or, or it could be a a large coefficient it could be a steep or it could be flat but it would be going here to the other side of, it still goes to the origin but have the orientation It have a negative slope because from left to right the line is pointing downwards. How do we formally prove this to be the case where the derivative of this 
the derivative of something which looks like minus c to the x would be just minus c. We'll prove it here, right here. If f of x represents this right here, this is what we're looking at, then the derivative with respect to x, you do a limit h approaching 0 and we prove it here onwards. You're going to plug in your basic template minus c times x plus h. Then you have the minus from the formula. Remember it's f of x plus h minus f of x. So here we have to do the minus from the formula and then we're looking at a minus cx or h because this this right here represents my function f of x but this comes from the basic definition or derivative formula. In the next step for proving it you just open everything. You have a minus cx minus ch plus cx over h. I didn't put these one exponents, the exponents, this one right here, I didn't put these ones on top of the x's, there's no need. Cancel out the cx's, they very well cancel out. Limit, as h approaches 0, you have a minus c h over h, h's cancel out, you end up having a minus c, again, which is what we wanted to show you right here. So the derivative of anything which looks like this, a very simple derivative, is just a constant with a minus sign, the variable disappears. So keep in mind, in this video we were looking at the two of the simplest derivatives, the derivative of a constant is always equal to zero and I've shown you the derivative of a constant multiplied by the most basic variable to an exponent of one is always equal to just a constant. That'll be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned. I have many videos on the way. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.